So here I have both of my sports cars. I have my 2015 C7 Corvette and my 2014 Gran Turismo Sport. I think both of these cars are awesome. They're both special in their own way. Honestly, if I had to sell one or the other, it'd be a tough choice because they're both fun to drive. But uh, what I think makes a car unique, its own personality has to be the engine because that's really the heart of the car. So I'm going to talk about the engines on how the engines compare and contrast. There's a lot of things in a way that they're similar in the technology and uh, in a lot of ways the technology is different. So I'm going to open up the hood on both of them. Alright, so I got the hoods open. Maserati opens like your average car. And on the Corvette, it opens up backwards. One of the things about both of these that I really like is that they're both V8s. In fact, all of my vehicles have V8s. I got Gran Turismo, the Corvette. My F-150 also has a V8. The thing about V8s is I like the sound to them. You know, a four-cylinder, a V6, it can't ever make the sound of a V8 just that rumble to them also all of my vehicles are naturally aspirated and what that means is they don't have turbos or superchargers the thing I like about naturally aspirated is you get it you get a better sound to them also the engine is more responsive like on turbos you may have turbo lag they're less complex less maintenance less less things to worry about as far as when the vehicle gets older and you gotta work on them because I plan to keep at least the Maserati though I plan to keep it for a long time turbos they just end up taking away the sound to them a perfect example is the Ferrari 458 naturally aspirated engine revs up to 9,000 rpms and it's got such an amazing sound to it now when they switched over to the 488 twin turbo it just does not sound the same and I've heard them in person it took away so much of the sound to it so that's a big reason as to why I like naturally aspirated the Corvette engine is a little bit bigger it's got a 6.2 versus the Maserati having a 4.7. I'll make a separate video on how horsepower and torque compares. I think this engine layout looks really nice. Like the way they got the logo right there on the intake manifold. And it looks like it'd be easy to work on if I ever had to. I've worked on a lot of vehicles and on some of them they're all crowded you can't get to anything both of these cars have what's called a cross plane crankshaft now on the Ferrari engines on the V8s they have what's called a flat plane flat plane allows it to rev higher and also the crankshaft can be lighter which is Part of the reason why they can rev higher now in the Gran Turismo though even though this engine is built by Ferrari they incorporate a cross plane crankshaft but you get more of that rumble to it that uh that sound we're used to uh, American muscle so this engine was redesigned from 2014 but it still has a lot of old technology a lot of old school stuff but it, there's really nothing wrong with that I mean it's been proven so that's a good thing so this one has two valves per cylinder versus the, Mas the Maserati having four valves per cylinder 
The advantage of the Maserati having four valves per cylinder is he can breathe better at higher RPM so he can put out more top end power. But the Corvette, where it really has the big advantage is in the torque, a lot of low end torque. Another thing about this engine that was kept old school is that it still uses push rods. The thing about push rods is uh, it's a disadvantage when it comes to higher speeds. You can only rev them so so much, and so this one makes maximum horsepower at 6,000 RPMs. The Maserati, on the other hand, it's got dual overhead camshafts. So this one makes up maximum horsepower at 7,000, so it's able to rev more. But the good thing about having push rods is that they're able to keep a lower center of gravity. The camshaft is towards the center of the engine, towards the valley. So it's kind of down low. So the engine doesn't have to be as, as wide. Now, if they had dual overhead camshafts, the camshafts would be up here so there would be more weight towards the top of the engine. So that's a good advantage to having push rods. It's the low center of gravity and not having the engine as tall I should say. But one thing they did change on this engine that is uh, that they incorporated what's called direct fuel injection. Direct fuel injection, the injectors are inside the combustion chamber so they're better able to atomize the fuel so that you get more, more performance because more, more fuel can be burnt. So that gives uh, better fuel economy and better horsepower. The compression ratio can be increased. They were able to increase the compression ratio to 11 and a half to one. And a higher compression ratio has several advantages to it. And one of them is that you can get more power out of a higher compression. Now in the Gran Turismo, it's got what's called multi-port fuel injection. So the injectors are not inside the combustion chamber. And I can actually see them right here. They spray down the intake. So this with multi-port you can't have as high of a compression ratio so this one has 11 to 1. Now both cars do require premium fuel but if it had direct injection they would probably be able to raise the compression as well as get more power and fuel economy out of the engine. The thing about direct injection is uh, the injectors have to be inside the combustion chamber so they need another fuel pump that increases fuel pressure much higher, so it's more complex. I think multi-port is more reliable because you got the injectors spraying into the intake manifold, so the injectors are in a way cleaning up your valves because the fuel comes before the valves, so the valves are getting soaked by the fuel. The thing about direct injection is the injectors are inside the combustion chamber, so the valves, they never get soaked by the fuel so they're far more likely to have carbon buildup. On the Corvette, one of the ways to prevent it is, uh, it actually says it on the owner's manual, how they require high detergent fuel, just so, just so you don't get as much, uh, much of that buildup. So I always try to get uh, high detergent fuels. There are some gas stations that don't come with that, so that's one thing to look at. So I actually prefer multi-port injection, just so I won't have to worry about that. Another thing you can do is uh, top-end cleaning. Spray some chemical into the, into the intake to kind of burn some off. So they got a couple things where they're different, a lot of things are the same. Also, both of these engines have what's called a wet sump system. So they actually have an oil pan. So an oil change is pretty simple, it's just drain and fill. I'll probably be doing the oil changes on the Maserati just because I started reading up on it and it's a very simple procedure. 
on the C06 and the C51 Corvettes, they have what's called a dry sump system. The advantage to that is uh, going around corners on the racetrack, you don't starve the engine on all. But on the Maserati, I guess they figure that it doesn't need that because it's not a race car. One thing that's strange though, it's on the 4.2 Gran Turismos, they do have dry sump oil system. Now you can tell if an engine is uh, the 4.2 or the 4.7 by the valve covers. So if you lift up the hood on the Maserati and it's got blue valve covers, that's a 4.2 engine. 